Welcome back. Time for a couple of talk of the table stories. First up, Governor Chris Christie in New Jersey has a plan to impose tougher requirements for people seeking unemployment benefits. He wants to require unemployed New Jerseyans to conduct weekly job searches on a state managed employment website in order to be eligible for unemployment benefits. Right now, people seeking benefits, they just have to check in with state authorities once a week. Governor Christie says that if people are required to search for jobs on jobsforjersey.com, they'll be more likely to find work faster. State Department of Labor and Workforce Development said if an individual won't even register on the website, then he is, quote, not actively seeking work and should not collect benefits. Garden State is one of the highest unemployment rates in the country. It is at 9.6%. It sounds on the surface like a great idea. Hey, we're not giving you these benefits unless you're actually working for, looking for a job. But not everybody has a computer. Not everybody has internet access. Is this really fair to ask people to do this and to make them go through this website? Well, I think you could make it fair by saying that they then have to go to a state building and someone can walk them through a computer, go to a library if they don't own it, but if they know how to use it. Uh, I think it makes sense. I, I just am aware of people that simply stayed on for a year, and if we extended it another year, and then as soon as it was over, ironically, they all of a sudden got a job. <laughs> but it, it does add another hurdle for anybody in a lower income bracket who might not have that internet access. The congressman makes a point, but many Americans are down on their luck, and you know, I, I don't know. Some states, they, they have it where you have to write uh, the job listings that you applied for, you just write it in. Mm -hmm. In some, we, it, we, we know why the no, governor but, but is it, doing but this. But a job training organization can can help them file, and can do the work. They don't have to type it in themselves. So if the state's going to do it, the bottom line is they should be they should be required to help those who don't have a computer or don't know how to use a computer. But I think the governor could uh, perhaps spend his time uh, more wisely creating jobs rather than creating bureaucracy. Do you think he's trying to kick some people off the unemployment rolls? Of course, of course he is. Save a because, little money that because New Jersey several years ago ran out of money for their unemployment program and the feds had to bail them out because they were using that fund, politicians, I don't know if it was Christie or not, for other budget problems. But, so of course they are. But, but state uh, businesses then have to fork out a lot. And that's what's and, happening. And, that's exactly and then, what's happening. Then the people who own business say, I don't want to be in New Jersey. So it's a competitive issue. If you've got these benefits that cost so much, you then move to another state. But if you've got, if you've got kids at home and you're a single parent, you've got a job, you, I'm assuming you can afford childcare or at least some place to look after your kids. Just to get, go to the library or go to that state office building, that may be a little bit of an imposition. Well, wait, wait a second. You had a job where you were away the whole time. Right. But you're not, getting, you're not getting paid what you were getting paid at your job on unemployment. No, you might be making two-thirds. You might be making half. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Up next, you know the old saying that no good deed goes unpunished? Love this story. A bartender in Ohio, Twyla DeVito, says she was fired from her job as a bartender at the local American Legion because she called the cops to report on that a regular bar patron who appeared to be drunk had gotten into his car and driven away. That patron's also a board member with the American Legion. He was driving with a blood alcohol level more than twice the legal limit. So far, so good. Two days later, Twyla got a call from her commander at the American Legion, telling, American Legion telling her she was fired. She was told that it was, quote, bad for business and that she didn't follow protocol. In Ohio, there is no law that requires bartenders to report a drunk driver. Twyla said that given the chance, she would make the same decision again. God bless her. It's a tough position to be in, God to be that her. bartender who grabs I'm the keys. I'm going to be honest, Congressman. She should have looked the other way. She really? still have her job. You know what? And the, and the bottom line is, as a member of Congress, I can count countless numbers of people who've lost loved ones because of drunk drivers. No, I, I respect what you're saying, I, but she's also now unemployed. I understand what you're saying. It's the sort of get along, go along. And we, why, and, and why we know, and the, we know the real so, reason so why she was fired. It, we're have because, a, because the guy was a board member of the American maybe, Legion. There's certainly there. looks so we're like going to have an issues. assault weapon ban. Yeah. Uh, and yet, drunk drivers kill far more than killed with guns. But no, no, we got to focus no, no, it's, on this. It's not a laughing matter. Drunk yeah. driving is a serious we're, problem. We're all saying that that I think she was right to do it in in the moral sense, in terms of what the right thing to yes. do as a human being is, yes. is to get the drunk so driver the off answer. the street. No, but I, Dominic's point is she created all these headaches for herself. She'd be better off for her own bottom line had she not made so that call. So what happens if he went out and killed someone? She might be liable. And she'd feel really guilty. 
Thanks. Okay, but what did happen? What did happen, evidently, was the drunk driver was taken off the road. God bless it. Right. He was taken off the road and, and arrested, and, I believe. And were safer. And she was terminated. Yeah, well, so, let, me, let me take this to a different, a different level. How many employees out there do you think get pressured by work to either t look the other way or not report hazardous conditions, dangerous conditions, things that are unfair, things that are unwise, because you don't want to create the stink? You create the stink, all of a sudden you're at the center of the storm. A great country has people that are willing to take the heat. To the, are, there, are there lawmakers, let's say, that are willing to take the heat yeah, there, from there, there, opposing voices in their own parties? Yeah, no, there are. And, uh, it, but the problem now with the parties is you just have too many of one ideology. So they believe what they believe. Doing the right thing. Doing the right thing is not as easy as we were taught when it's we were kids. It's not easy, but it's, it's a strong nation has citizens who do the right thing. A we weak nation has citizens that don't. You have corruption in Mexico. There's so much. There's pale. corruption everywhere. Right, but you have so much in Mexico that this magnificent country is held back. She, she did the right thing, but when she's sitting home, Congressman, on I, unemployment. I hope you will write an article helping her get a job. <laughs> here's, what, here's what I love about this show. <laughs> All of this from a bartender at the American Legion, and we're talking about directions of the country and morality and things like that. That's a good point. Thanks. That's a good point. Thank you. Here's one for RFL. We're <laughs> going to take a quick break here on the aforementioned RFL. We're back right after this. Stay with us.